how widespread this influence is, I'm going to show you a quote from another well-known 20th century uh, public figure who appeals to yet another metaphor for the uh, blank slate. He said, when kids go to school at the age of six, there's an empty bucket there, and someone, by the time they're 18, will fill that bucket. Is it going to be a parent? Is it going to be a good educator? Or is it going to be some other scum out there who's going to fill that bucket? And that is a quote from, yes, the governor of California. <laughs> <clears throat> now, there's a second doctrine that uh, makes up the conventional wisdom about human nature. And my name for it comes from a poem by John Dryden called The Conquest of Grenada that starts, I am as free as nature first made man ere the base laws of servitude began when wild in woods the noble savage ran. Now, the concept of the noble savage is more often associated with this gentleman, the philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Here's what Rousseau wrote. He said, so many authors have hastily concluded that man is naturally cruel and requires a regular system of police to be reclaimed, whereas nothing can be more gentle than him in his primitive state. The example of the savages seems to confirm that mankind was formed ever to remain in this condition and that all ulterior improvements have been so many steps towards the decrepitness of the species. Now, you can only understand someone writing in a previous century if you know who he was arguing against. And in the case of Rousseau, he alludes to so many authors, but there's one in particular that he had in mind. This man, who painted a rather different picture of life in a state of nature. He wrote, hereby it is manifest that during the time men live without a common power to keep them all in awe, they are in that condition which is called war. And such a war is of every man against every man. In such condition there is no place for industry, because the fruit thereof is uncertain, and consequently no arts, no letters, no society, and which is worst of all, continual fear and danger of violent death and the life of man, solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. This, of course, is the famous quote from Thomas Hobbes in Leviathan. Now, the noble savage, Rousseau's alternative, uh, had, was a good deal more emotionally appealing. It implied that there was no need for a domineering Leviathan, an armed government and police force, to keep us from each other's throats. If we're basically nasty, then we have to accept conflict as a permanent part of our condition. Whereas if we're basically noble, we can work toward a utopian society of the future. Children are born savages, so if our inner savage is nasty, it means that bringing up children will involve discipline and conflict. Whereas if our inner savage is noble, it means that bringing up children is simply a matter of providing them with opportunities to develop their potential. Like the blank slate, the noble savage is not ancient history, but continues to be influential. I think it's behind the widespread respect for everything natural and a distrust of anything man-made, natural foods, natural medicines, natural childbirth, and so on. It's behind the unfashionability of authoritarian styles of child-rearing, which were popular just a couple of generations ago, and behind the common understanding of social problems as repairable defects in our institutions, as opposed to a traditional view that would have them be part of the inherent tragedy of the human condition. And the third doctrine that often accompanies the blank slate and the noble savage is associated with another French philosopher, René Descartes. Descartes wrote, when I consider my mind, I cannot distinguish any parts, but apprehend it to be clearly one and entire. But it is quite otherwise with corporeal objects, for there is not one of them imaginable by me which my mind cannot easily divide into parts. This is sufficient to teach me that the mind or soul of man is entirely different from the body. A, an idea that centuries later was ridiculed uh, as the doctrine of the ghost in the machine. Uh, Gilbert Ryle, the English philosopher, deserves credit for that word. It was only later that it was used as the title of an album by the police. <laughs> the ghost in the machine was an appealing doctrine because people don't like to think of themselves as glorified clockwork. Machines are insensate and have some workaday purpose like grinding corn or, sharp, or sharpening pencils. Humans, we like to think, are sentient and have some higher purpose, such as the pursuit of love, worship, knowledge, and beauty. Machines follow the ineluctable laws of physics, whereas we like to think that behavior is freely chosen. With choice comes optimism about possibilities for the future, 
And with choice comes responsibility and the power to hold others accountable for their actions 